Hey, it's Fortnite at long last. So, I was... A lot of people don't remember this, but this game was announced in like 2011 or 2012, and it kind of resurfaced over the last few years or so when it started like getting developed again and properly, I suppose, but this game has been like five, six years in the making or something like that, So, and I've been, I've been looking forward to it ever since the beginning. It's interesting though, because some of the initial buzz died down, or not the buzz, some of the initial promise has been acted upon by other games, basically. Because this, this game came out back when, like, oh, wow, the hot new things were, like, uh, Minecraft being in its first, like, early hype wave still, and, like, Orcs Must Die was a recent development, so, like, the idea of, like, having, like, an Orcs Must Die, die survival thing tied to, like, the day-night cycle of a Minecraft game and the, like, actual, like, freeform crafting and, like, building and stuff like that, like, that was a really cool idea, the idea that you'd go out during the day and scavenge and go back at night and, and hug, hunker up with your friends and try to and defend and then go back out, and, like, that was a cool-sounding cycle. Uh, then it took forever to come out, and in many ways, that kind of game has been made many times now by other companies. Uh, in that meantime, a lot of people acted on the idea in a number of ways. Daisy is a thing, Seven Days to Die is a, th a thing, many other games that I haven't even played and don't really know much about or have already gone in this territory, but this thing is finally out. So is it worth it? A little concerned. Uh, one thing is that, uh, it's gonna be free to play which means that it might have some really irritating progression systems. I got a press copy, just to be clear. So, uh, right now it's an early access and you can pay to join the early access, like a beta, like a paid beta, basically. Uh, I got it for free as a code, so that's not a concern for me, but that's something to keep in mind for all of you. Uh, and also, I think now you trigger day and night manually, kind of like how you press a button to start waves and orcs must die, so it's not quite the day and night cycle I originally was hoping for, and also think I think you play mission by mission in specific scenarios as opposed to having a single contiguous world that's cycling back and forth and stuff like that. So the game that came out was not ultimately what I envisioned when I was first shown the, uh, when I first saw ideas of this uh, back at the beginning. So I have a slight amount of like No Man's Sky disillusionment going on, but it could still be a cool thing, whatever it turns out to be. It also requires the epic launcher. I don't think it's going to be on Steam. It at least isn't right now, last time I checked. Or at the very least... Actually, no, it, it might be on Steam. I don't know, I got a code for it, for the launcher, anyway. But I, I think it is actually on Steam. So they're basically just saying, Hey, check this place out, it's new, remember it's in beta, and we'll give you the Founder's Rewards. Okay. So this is going to be our... Let's call it Part Zero. Because <laughs> this is going to be a co-op playthrough with uh, Bird, Wander, and Shell, or... Maybe it's Bird, Andrew, and Wander? I don't know. Bird and Wander and a, maybe a fourth, or maybe just the three of us. I, we haven't spoken that clearly yet. But I need to get tutorial stuff out of the way. And my loot boxes and basic setup stuff that I think is worth showing for those that want to. Otherwise, just skip to part one when we start doing the actual multiplayer missions. <laughs> forward. Security system failure. Ignore that. So, introductions. I'm Ray, and we're the commander's support crew. Or at least we 
we would be if we had a commander. <laughs> and if this drill is any indication, we won't last a second in the storm on our own. Say that again? Not a drill? Uh, well, that certainly explains the monsters. Fun fact, our mission was to prevent the storm from happening, so on to plan B. Plan B. You guys got anything? Anything? Incoming Come on. Distress call. Incoming distress Oh, call. I think you just found our plan B. Ramirez here. I'm requesting backup. Read you loud and clear. We have survivors in danger. The storm's closing in. Please hold. Do not put me on hold. Let's cut to the chase. Have you ever considered fighting the forces of evil? Because we really need a commander, and I think you've got what it takes. <laughs> Don't listen to him. You're going to be amazing. Connecting you to our commander now. Guys, take your positions. Lock, flip the switch. Whenever you're ready, commander. Okay, Commander. Ramirez is counting on you to get those survivors to safety. Hello, Ray? If you can hear me, now would be a great time to hurry up. Copy that. Weapons and building systems coming online... now. Yeah, back in action. We got a pack of husks set ahead. What's our firepower situation? See for yourself. Lead the way, Commander. Whoa, hitch, little hitching there. Okay. Is that a headshot? Oh, we can, we can zoom in to aim, too. Cool. Alright. So I believe I'm playing as a soldier class right now. This game starting off as being surprisingly similar to Gears of War. Same developer, obviously. I mean the story specifically. The entire almost the entire world has been wiped out by some sort of scourge, and now we need to fight that scourge, which comes out of the ground specifically, uh, much like the locust, and even has is more dangerous at night, because like in in that game the uh, krill swarms would come out and wipe people out at night. There's a surprising number of comparisons to be drawn, except Whenever for of course the part where this is non. The main difference being between the two being that this one's all casual and silly, whereas that one's dire and brown. Nice. What's your situation out here, Ramirez? I've been holding down the fort, but nowhere safe for long. Well, we're here to help. Ah. Sometimes it's worse. We'll need to build our way out of the cave. Enter build mode and select stairs. You can't tell me what to do. I'm gonna do this instead. There we go. That was pointless. <laughs> that was completely pointless. Okay, uh, Q enters build mode. Alright, and we're gonna look for stairs. Press F3 to select stairs. F3? Oh yeah, it's over there. I see it. Why the F buttons instead of num- oh, because numbers are used for our weapons. That makes sense. Howdy. You're gonna need a bigger gun. A much bigger gun. We can help with that. We need some crafting materials. Try smashing up some cars and trees. Where'd you get bacon? I just got bacon by searching that bush. These are good sources of wood for building and twine for crafting. We're building up our resources. You can see them in the top left corner. How much we have of different items. And we're specifying uh, crafting. We're apparently specifying, specifying crafting and building as being two different things. That gives me some metal I can use. So if I search, I get a special item. Cars are a trusty source of metal, nuts and bolts, and mechanical parts. That's not what I said. I didn't do anything with a car. So it looks like if you destroy something, you get the base components, but if you search it, you get something else instead, but the item's consumed in the process, so you can't also just destroy it. That's only applicable with certain items. Looks like you auto-collect stuff, I think. 
You don't have to like go pick it up. I think it just floats to you. This one's hardy, for some reason. Huh. So I feel like you wouldn't want to destroy a car. She encourages me to, but I feel like you shouldn't destroy cars in the post-apocalypse. They're probably a bit of a finite resource no one's ever going to make again. Alright, so we need to make enough resources for a spare gun. The question is, how do you make a spare gun in the first place? What's three over here? Oh, I've got a, so I've got a straight-up sword. Look at that go. Okay, so I assume I just flat out don't have enough resources yet. Oh, the side of the screen says I need three. I need uh, I need twine and, and mechanical parts. There we go. I hadn't seen the quest thing in the corner. I was looking for an actual crafting menu to tell me what they cost. Open the inventory. Click on the gun icon. Select it and craft. Oh my god, the entire thing. What have I done? Okay, so I... And then there's the new gun I can make. Uh, what do you want me to make? A rifle. Okay, so this rifle. Homemade assault rifle. Six metal stuff, four other thing, four other stuff. Twine, I believe. Okay. Uh, craft a C. I like the art style so far. We're starting in a good place there. Hurry up out there, Ramirez. Whoa, okay, time to go. I've got like a narrow time limit to fight these guys off, apparently. Like a surprisingly brief one. Whoa! Oh. Uh-oh. Uh. I'll try to help from here. That was an accident. <laughs> try to get back up there. Alright, time limit's over. Does that mean we lived long enough? Oh yeah, day's coming up. You're not that funky. What's your status? We can't find a way out of here soon. We're all as good as dead. Don't worry, hermano. We're working on it. No need to worry. We've got your back. Let's place some traps. To keep husks from getting inside, place traps in front of the door. All right, it's trap time. Let's see. So F5 is my trap. The only one I have right now, I think. Oh, I can point it wherever I want to. Interesting. So when you build, you snap to a grid, but when you place traps, you can kind of just place them however the hell you feel like, apparently. Alright. Sure. Or I can go there, apparently. Oh! Never mind. These are not valid locations. That's, that's why it's kind of red. But I need to place it here instead. Okay. I pick the floor trap. That's my one. I assume there's more outside of the tutorial. Orcs must die! Orcs must die! Let's see how those survivors are holding up. I really like Orcs Must Die, so I'm happy that this feels a little bit like that. Already. Well, I can afford for now, I think. Or maybe it's some kind of maximum or something. Ramirez! Hang tight. We're gonna take care of it. So so far it seems like Orcs Must Die plus overt resource gathering instead of just getting coins, and then you have NPCs you can actually interact with along the way uh, for doing quests and getting rewards and stuff like that. So I believe you can find NPCs out in the wilderness and do stuff for them and get rewarded for so for doing that. Uh, Ramirez? I'm getting some seriously weird readings here. What's on the other side of that wall? No clue. We couldn't 
find our way in. I can fix that. Enter edit mode. Select the square in the middle and the square below it to create a door. Oh, edit. And then, uh... I'm in edit mode. No, how do I... Is that how I make the door? Okay, I drag over the two pieces of that wall to make a door in it. Interesting. Huh. Interesting thing to have access to there. Whoa! Was this here the whole time? Is this a missile or some sort of rocket? Some sort of rocket. Actually, wait! It's the best sort of rocket! Commander, there's a satellite on board! If we have a satellite, we can guide Ramirez and the survivors back to our home base. Then let's launch this thing. And how do I launch it? Somewhere down there? Was that a poster back there that just said space? How do I crouch? Alt? No, whoa. So alt's your inventory, apparently. Again. Let's see, I can type. Blurgle hurgle -urg. Uh, my people that aren't even playing with me right now. And whatnot. Okay, uh C is not is not crouch. Oh now it just thinks all these buttons I'm typing are supposed to be typing. Okay, so C is not crouch, alt, control, shift, tab, D, X, C, F, R. There might not be any crouching in this game. <laughs> I tried a bunch of different letters. I figured I'd just want this stuff. It might just be your armor, though, so I guess it probably doesn't matter so much. Oh, it's blue goo. Blue glow. That's a resource. The weird little blue thing on the end of my resource thing is that. You get resources everywhere. It does seem like the, uh... The game tried to find the best settings, though, and they might be a little... A little out of whack. The game definitely hitches periodically a little bit. Early access, though. It's funny this game, five years in the making, or, or six years in the making, or something like that, and it's finally playable, and it's still, it's still in early access. I've got a bunch of blue glow now. Oh, I needed that, apparently. Great. Now get outside before you're engulfed in flaming rocket exhaust. I guess this is a blue glow tutorial, because I needed, I needed we three need of them. keep that rocket safe until launch. Chances, Lenny. I'm on my way. What the hell is that thing? Get out of there! I think I can hold it. Hi, everyone. Trying to be dead. The music stopped for a second. That was weird. Whoa! We I needed all that, I think. We've got more incoming. You need to protect the survivors. Excuse me. No, stop. You're not allowed in there, sir. Extremely rude. It would appear that Lenny is now dead. Honestly, this seems like a better weapon for the headshots. In this case, where I'm doing kind of mid-range, long-range attacks. Okay, no, they're coming in now. <laughs> Whoa, what's that? Throwing things. I think they're gone now. So we've got a few enemy types now. We've got a big, hulking charger tank dude. We got a guy that does range throws. We got these creeps that are basically just meat bags. At this point, I don't have a ton to worry about because it'd be hard for them to reach and uh, reach us in time. Ooh. That was a fun toy to have. So now I can do a periodic airstrike, but it has a cooldown. 
It looks like you have four slots for weapons in the bottom right corner, or tools. And then you have slots for cooldowns, because the airstrike is after the dotted line. Ten seconds to blast off. And the icons go from squares to circles. Which is some pretty decent inter uh, interface design. It's a very busy interface, but it's mostly comprehensible so far. voice actor enter your home base step spot there we go oh I'm making a whole banner and everything I need to figure out how that voice actor is at some point so we get to make a banner and stuff okay sure uh, standard special it's just the letter F oh for Fortnite okay I probably do stand probably do something standard there's a spiral there's a V, some little waves on the bottom, a bomb, some bricks, more Vs, they like the letter V. That little notch, coffee! A cube, <laughs> just in oh my god, it's the cube, it's the rusty lake, it's here, it found us. Uh, it looks like an eclipse, some stars. I assume a donkey, okay. I assume you can just pick a... I assume you can just pick a picture and that's it. That's probably all you can do. Default colors, no other variations. Okay. So I don't think you're going to be able to do, uh... I don't think you can do any sort of crazy, complicated, custom stuff where you move little elements around and stuff like that. But, uh, you can make a little bit of something for yourself. Would like something a little more custom, but I think we're going to be stuck with what we get here. I kind of do like the spiral, the purple spiral. I think I'm going to stick with that. I'm sure we can edit as, as we go. So, close. Mission rewards, level 4 loot. We got wooden floor spikes. They're random ass planks with a few sticks sticking out of them. This is definitely improvised weapons. They, well, we tried. And then we get a handmade ruler sword. Sword medium uses fast attack, deal high damage. All right. It oh, it is a ruler sword. I thought they meant like ruler sword isn't like I don't know like like Liu Bei, but no, it's literally a ruler. You can see the notches on it, and they sharpened into a blade. Okay. That th that that's fitting enough. The original trailer showed people using stop signs to try to make walls and stuff like that. So like having a ruler for a sword is actually pretty fitting. That's funny. Okay, and so... Shield defense one, loot llamas... What's going on here? Play now. Storm shield defense one, loot llamas... Before and after science. Let's see. I don't think I'm allowed to play online yet, am I? It's daily rewards, apparently. Founders pack rewards. Um, K. K. How do I get back out of here? Oh, collect. There we go. 200 experience, apparently. There we go. So I can't choose a hero. I think I'm still in the tutorial, so I guess we'll keep going then. Alright. Let's go out here into the world map now and keep learning how to play the game in a sub travel traveling to lobby. I cannot tell if I'm in a tutorial or not. I think I am. I think I am. Hi. 
we've got uh, Trooper Ramirez, so we're trying to rescue him, her. I assume we can't pick somebody else or anything. Edit squad. No, that's my only thing I have right now. Whoa, my goodness. What did I just click on? Squad bonus. There's a there's like a complicated tree going on in here. Oh, that there's a ninja star for probably the ninja class. Okay. Mission defenders. Huh. There's a lot of stuff to start figuring out. But for now, I think that's the only character I can play as, and I just have to deal with that. Okay. Let's get in there, then. In my solo, I assume, tutorial mission. <laughs> we need to establish the Storm Shield, a persistent base of operations in the battle against the storm. Complete missions. Use resources from completed missions to expand your Storm Shield, and then upgrade and defend. Defend the Storm Shield to push the storm back and unlock new missions. People are still alive out there, and we can save them. This could be our thing. Where do we start? Oh, I, I get it. I have people I'm looking for, too. Look, so what if there are storms and monsters? If we all pull together, we can bring all of them home. What do you say? They're closing in too fast. We're not going to make it to the door. That's our cue, Commander. Shield. You'll be fine. Out you go. Stay behind me. Pick up the pace, Pop. Nah, take your time. It's only a horde of monsters. everyone. You are now protected by a temporary storm shield. But I think I know how to turn this little home base into something incredible. If we can upgrade and protect it, this storm shield could keep you and everyone you rescue safe from the storm. And that's where you and your construction chops come into play. You are a talented builder, like Frank Lloyd Wright or Bob. So let's get started. Go activate the storm shield. I do really enjoy the general animation and, uh, aesthetic and, like, the actual mood the characters are in. It's so weird coming from Epic, though. The goal is to protect the Storm Shield from any attackers. Here's what you can build! But we don't have the resources to build that quite yet. And here's what we do have the time and resources to build. Still good. Let's get started with the basics. Can't build without resources. Let me send some for you. Let's build some defenses around the storm shield. Let's start with walls. You have wood, stone, and metal. There we go. This should start off pretty straightforward. Gotta get around to the back side real quick so it might be harder to access afterwards. There we go. So it kind of locks to a grid. You can kind of and you can kind of control it with, by aiming around, you can kind of make it work. Gotta be a little careful where you click, though. Now, add a door. So it won't let me do this yet, so I need to edit it right now. Then add the door here. Then confirm. There we go. Next, you'll want to build some floors and ceilings. Okay, so we have the basic setup now. Now I need floors because that's apparently what you need if you want to build traps. Is you, you can't do them without having a floor in place. 
There we go. I can't be help but be amused a little bit by what they're saying here, because like, first you need some floors and some ceilings. Wait, one ceiling. Nicely done. Looks like we could use some traps. Place a floor, ceiling, and wall trap. Nope. We need to pick a wall trap manually. That one. There we go. So we have some dart shooting traps. We have an electric field and the ceiling zapper. Which I guess we can't read what they do here, unfortunately. That's too bad. Those are the basics. Now let's finish the build. Here's what you need to construct. Low walls are great for slowing down the enemy, and they don't get in the way of your bullets. To make a low wall, enter edit mode. Remove the top two rows. Hang on a second, I just wanna... F I gotta finish... Our trap set. There we go. It's complete! Kind of. We have a kill box, kind of, at least. Okay, my objective is currently to defend your storm station- uh, build remaining defenses zero out of five, uh, low walls. Okay, right. That's where we are right now. I get- I can make low walls by... F1 to select walls, then go into- We have to edit? Uh -uh. Oh, I'm not in building mode. Whoops. So in building mode, I go to- Oh, wait, I'm pressing- I was pressing okay. F the wrong button. I was, I was pressing 1 instead of F1, that's why we got confused there. In edit mode, I need to click to deselect different squares. Okay, so... Did I do that wrong? Oh, right. So, F1, then G. There we go. Then we can, can confirm that I can place that wall over and over again. So I have to re-edit every time I want to change the basic layout, but I can stick with the existing one for now. Neat. And that's how you maze, huh? Good the enemies have to go around that. I, uh, broke the airstrike. Let's not dwell on who crashed what into a mountain, all right? So for now, we'll stick with grenades. Here's a target for you. Try throwing a grenade at the target. Oh, you do not. Nicely done. Looks like we're ready to defend. If your walls take damage during the fight, you can repair them as long as you have enough of the matching material. You may want to craft some more ammo, but after that, you're all set. When you're ready to start the fight, select Expand Shield from the Storm Shield console. So you cannot, uh... You can't hold X and then get, like, an, an arc on the screen and then release it or something like that, like some grenades in some games. The moment you press X, it's just going. <laughs> There's no real build up there. Okay, so we should probably consider building some ammo, which I don't think I've ever learned how to do yet, but I'm sure it's something I can figure out. Ammo. There we go. Light bullets. So you use what kind of bullets? You. It has a DPS. Great. Uh, does it explicitly count out a type of ammo? Fully automatic. Maybe that's just listed in the ammo itself. Light bullets, medium bullets, shells and slugs. Ammo for weapons that use all types of shells. Mid-range caliber bullets, light bullets, heavy bullets. Interesting. I'm not sure how you, Yeah, I'm not really sure how you tell which ones you, you can use, but I might... But I think I'm fine, frankly, so let's just go. Ah. Send a request for help for the next defense. Huh. That might be a matchmaking thing that helps invite more people to your party during the, for the next defense. If you're low on people, but this is a tutorial, so it's disabled for now, I believe. Expand. Here we go. Shield power increasing. As expected, the shields have gone a little flaky. Let's see if the storm notices. Is that actually Birch? Is that who that is? I think it did. You've got this, Commander. Defend your storm shield. It throws bones! So one thing that surprises me as well, this... Uh, is how the aesthetic went so heavily in, the f in favor of, uh, basically becoming... Plants vs. Zombies. The zombies definitely feel like a very familiar aesthetic. 
trouble at our fort? Where? I'm already fighting the bad guys. Also, why can't I build any more traps? F5 doesn't work anymore for some reason. I'm not really sure what to make of that. Huh. Weird. Definitely got a plan for a zombie thing. They already look like plants for zombies enemies with their weird aesthetic, but then you start wearing those... See them with the weird uniforms and clothes, they start becoming like... Very, like various caricatures and joke characters and stuff like that. Like then it becomes really clear that this really does feel like Plants vs. Zombies. Oh, do I just need to pick a new heal, a floor trap? Oh, I just need to press the pick thing button. Interesting. Or did I hit my maximum now? Wait, how did I build that? I thought I'd. I don't want to build a healing pad. Listen, I got some controls to figure out still. It's fine. Oh, the entire floor went with it. That's not very nice. Let's see, let's go to the wall. Am I under oh, over there. What are you doing over there? You're supposed to go around the walls, silly. You and your nonsense path. Oh, I can't pick a floor trap now. Maybe I hit the cap. Curious. I seem to not be able to pick traps anymore. So maybe I can't go- maybe you can't go full trap like an Orcs Must Die. Maybe there's like a local cap. Somewhere on the screen that I'm missing or something. All I see is I have an- I have an inventory size, I have a resource pool for my weapon, and for my resources in general. I have objectives. I have little balance meters that seem to be indicating how much I'm helping or something. It's like, yeah, yeah, I, I shoot people and the knife gets higher. So I said, looks like the, the knife meter goes up when I shoot things, the building meter goes up when I build things, and the hammer thing goes up when I craft things, I guess? Okay. And they're down. Oh. That really got him. Oh yeah, that, I was right about that. Combat building and utility. Whatever utility means in this context. I feel like you need teammates to have utility meter go anywhere. So you can actually help people out or something. There we go. I got a level up. Now we can figure out how to spend a skill point. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. My loot is leveling up. What does this mean? Okay. So I guess the stuff you do here... I guess how well you play gives you credits for how, mu how high of a level you get. And that affects your loot chest of which one you get to open. Like the higher level... The better you perform in the mission, I guess, the higher level loot chest you get at the end of the mission, basically, as you work down that line. So I got- I got a level 2, or level 3 or something, uh... Okay then. Let's go back to home base. Oh my god, no, they're teleported via, like, beams that disintegrate them. Every time that happens, they die! And a copy is made, so we have level 3 loot. We get two loot pinatas. Mini reward llama. Oh, I thought they were loot pinatas, but they're reward llamas. That's very different. And we get 510 hero XP. Okay. Quest complete. We got the Copper Knight shotgun and 100 V bucks. It's apparently the store currency. That's the probably the free to play currency. It's a dangerous world out there, Commander. Luckily, the vendor tech store has you covered. Visit the loot tab to claim your complimentary mini llama. While you're there, use the V-Bucks in your account to purchase your very own upgrade llama. Swing away and loot those llamas! Llamas. Llamas. What in the world? Okay. 
I've got a mini llama token. Let's go to the loot. Let's get that llama. I'm back. This is this is the strangest. Okay. Uh, some survivor XP, copper machine pistol, ceiling zapper. Look at that thing, it's like covered in flames. And then the ceiling zapper, which we already had before, I guess, but maybe it's an upgraded one, or maybe I'm unlocking it for real now outside the tutorial. Upgrade llama. Cost me uh, 100 of the thing. I feel that, you know. It... <laughs> hey, what you doing? Oh my god, they have feelings. Sledgehammer! Kill it harder. Wait, no, he's still cheering for me after I take his- after I rip stuff out of him. That just makes it creepier now. Ah, uh, hey, common, survivor. Personality dependable, shield regen bonus. Okay. Survivalist Jonesy, an uncommon hero. He's a soldier survivalist. Ooh, lead survivor. Okay. Curious personality, explorer. This is Survivalist Jonesy. They're a soldier, they're a survivalist. Bunch of stats I don't have a lot of context for because I can't compare them to any other character yet. We got a Predator and we got some Founders coins. It can be traded for special llamas, only available during Founders Month. Found by completing quests and in in, in other llamas. So I should probably spend those before they cease to become available or something. Okay. Now you've opened your llamas, you're ready to move on. You now have access to your skill tree. Let's take a look around. Don't forget to check out your quest journal for a few missions. I still have a mini reward llama. A tiny hello to you. Oh, yay! I'm hurting their feelings, and that means that they can feel this. Good one. <laughs> don't, don't congratulate me. That's creepy. Schematic XP. Okay. So this game has a lot of things that they call experience, apparently, and also wall spikes. Huh. Okay, so if I get 100, if I get 100 Founders Coins, I can open a Founders Llama that may or may not have these kinds of things inside them. Ooh, isn't that interesting? I just want more classes, though. I want more heroes. I need a hero. Enjoy your loot! Don't forget to claim your mini llamas and spend the V-Bucks you've earned by completing missions. Oh, we got Base Kyle! Is Based Kyle? Uh, has a strong base with electric floors to stop enemies, bull rush to sweep, and walls clear. Let's see, so is it, I assume he's a builder type dude? Okay. And I got some currency. What else do I get? Pre-order rewards, apparently. A uh, copper rocket launcher. Copper grenade launcher, double punch, some ammo. Weird reward. Founders daily rewards. Collect additional rewards daily. Weird. Home base banner. Oh, there's new banners for the for that other screen. Secret special new ones like this creepy. It looks like a sentient uh, ice cream sundae or a car that's that's horny or uh, overheated toad. I don't know. Hey, hey, bring it in. Look, don't tell anyone else about this. But since you got in on the ground floor of this whole saving the world thing. We got you a little something special. Check it out! Is that five upgrade llamas? Jeez. Some teammate experiences and armory slots. Increase the number of items that we store in your armory by 50, it looks like. Got Trooper Ramirez, and Jonesy, and Penny, Kyle, Ken, Sarah. Special- wow, okay, so this game has four classes. It looks like I got two genders of every class, so I just have everything now. That's what I was hoping for, is like, oh, can I just please- uh, can I be the character I want? I was hoping- because we're- I've been playing this with friends, and I wanted us all to be different classes, just because it feels like a better start. I want to be an outlander, I think- I think we- everyone also has a, some idea of who they want to be. Oh my goodness, this just keeps going. <laughs> Retractable floor spikes, copper founder's revolt. Uh, daily rewards for 21 days, it looks like. And even more banners, like we have pizza and a star and other things. Okay, I have some options to play with here. Oh my goodness, it keeps going. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, that's the same. Oh, I have a schematic for that for that same pistol now. A so skill I can... tree upgrade is now available. You I... can spend skill points to unlock and upgrade your abilities. 
Right now you have enough skill points to unlock a new hero class. Purchase the constructor leadership node. Now I can craft my own copy of that, basically. Let's see here. Oh, I have a rare variant of this hero. How is that different? Looks like a lot of health and shield going up, basically. Yeah. Health and shield go up by a, by a fair margin there. Let's see. You are... Uncommon hero soldier. So there, she's a rescue uh, trooper, and he is a survivalist. So even within the soldier class itself, there are variations to be had. A soldier... Ninja. Other ninja, but that one's an assassin, that one's a fleet foot. And we have the Outlander Shock Specialist versus the Outlander Pathfinder. And then there's these base characters that I can't use without hero leadership skill. But they're base, Kyle... The, that, that one's base and that one's tank. Okay. I wonder how some of them vary from each other. So that's rare and that's uncommon. So the blue ones are probably better across the board. Uh, this little bottom corner seems like not the best way to navigate this kind of menu, but sure. Let's see how these two characters compare then. So that character has... They can do a fragment charge. Uses one ammo. It consumes a... Uh, I'm, I'm, picking, picking, I'm picking between two different uh, ground operatives because I figure... I mean two different uh, outlanders because I think that's going to be the class I play. I need to pick the variation I want. I'm, trying to, I'm hoping everyone in the party picks different characters. So it deploys a teddy. It will blast enemies within four tiles for a base of ten physical damage four times per second. So it's like a distraction bait thing that hurts things. Anti-material charge performs a punch. It travels 0.5 tiles, delivering damage to any structure punched for a bunch of damage. It will knock back smaller enemies. Phase shift. Rapidly shifts one and a half, one and a half tiles in the direction they're moving, so it's a blink, basically. Squad bonus. Work, work. There's a Warcraft reference. Work, work. Increases harvesting tool damage by 12%. Uh, support bonus is up, are applied to your primary hero when this hero is in your support slot. Oh. So you can put characters in your support slots, I guess, and they'll give you a bonus to your main character you're playing. So here's my shock specialist character. He has phase shift. Shock tower. Chain lightning. Oh my god, he comes with chain lightning. I mean, he's, he's immediately my favorite then. So it, does, it hits multiple people, and it bounces around and does damage and so on. Anti-material charge. That's the same punch again. Squad bonus. Shockwave grants 40%... Uh... Shock phase. Shockwave grants 40% damage resistance for 6 seconds to unlock to unlock Evolve Hero to star level 2. Okay. Requires primary hero. The shockwave, though. Which thing specifically is the shockwave? The part of the shock tower? Either way, I think I like him. I'm gonna play as him. So let's play as this guy. Can I inspect him? Upgrade him or something? Oh, increases chance to find double loot by 6%. So there's a whole there's, there's a whole better menu the whole time I could have looked at. Loot Llama. The Llama Fragment deploys the Loot Llama, which is really its own reward when you think about it. Whack the Loot Llama with a harvest tool to get a building get building materials and crafting ingredients before it disappears. The Llama Fragment is a special case and will stack on top of any other fragment ability you have. When you have a Lama Fragment, it will always be used first. Capacitor increases duration of Shock Tower by 2 seconds. And then Shock Tower gets 35% bonus damage. There's multiple bonuses for that. Looks like you just unlock them by leveling up. So I start off with Phase Shift. Then I get Loot Llama Shock Tower by getting level 2. Then 5 and 8 upgrade the Shock Tower more. These things are down here too. Phased out. Oh, this keeps going. The scroll bar keeps changing size. So, Shock Tower does a third bolt, increased duration of Shock Tower, just a bunch of bonuses and, and, and passive upgrades to things, basically. Let's, uh, let's level him up. I'll confirm that level up. I'll give him more health, more bonuses, and I'll give those other... I'll get this other item, this other skill, the Loot Llama, the Shock Tower. Looks like I can do it another time, too. So now I'm level 3, based on the resources we had there. Cool. Okay. We have a skill bar for me to work towards. Okay. Decent amount of meta stuff going on here. A lot of progression systems layered. That'll, it'll take a little while to get 
keep track of in here. There's my armory. But there's one way to see all my heroes. Oops. Accidentally just picked that guy. Get back to my level three. There we go. They, they all stay at level one? Yeah, so I, I leveled this character specifically. Schematics. So you can craft all these different items from here, I think. No, you just have them here. Uh, but I think I can... I think I can upgrade them. So I can level up the items as we go to make them better. The, they get better stats as you click on them here, but then you get specific landmarks where they get better damage as you go. So that's also worthwhile. Here there's a the straight up sniper rifle. This thing has a really significant overall DPS though. Okay. Here's my survivors. Can they also be upgraded as people? That's funny. This gives you people, your people, bonus shield regen. This is uh, provides increased power in the scouting party squad. Assigned to a squad with survivors with the same personality, increase the power they provide. And can I can I upgrade him too? You can level up the individual people too. Holy crap! There's a lot going on with this meta system. This might we may not look at this these screens very often, and mostly just do a bunch of missions, and then I might do the leveling up in between because. It might be the it might be a very time consuming process to keep doing it. Let's go look at I should get those upgrade llamas. So we have this is a tier one of skill tree. That's constructor leadership uh, allows constructors to join your hero squads. Okay. I think I do I need do I have to pick that one specifically? Unlock uh, tree tier two. I wonder if that's at the end. Oh my god, is that it over here? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing something around here unlocks that eventually. We'll find it as we go. So I need to pick you because there's nothing else to go with for now, I think. So purchase. Nice work. Get out there and build something amazing. And don't forget to keep an eye on your skill points. The skill tree is your best bet for boosting the power of your home base and earning new powerful gadgets. Okay, this is weird. I find it weird that I'm getting resources to craft for missions, just because I would hope that the mission itself would be kind of balanced in a certain way, requiring you to craft, get those resources during the mission. It's weird to have them available outside the mission. Huh. The shield is up, the survivors are safe, Ramirez is ready for action. Not a bad start. Luck, let's see that status report. Okay, okay, good reporting. One small note? Let's maybe try not to cry in the war room. Even if the radar looks like, like, wow, that's entirely red. Um, Commander, we've got multiple storms converging on home base. And no idea how to fight back. Well, you knew that last part. But luckily, I've got... I'm sure there's something here. Pop, got anything? Ha, here we go! In case of an after-hours emergency, contact your 24-hour tech support agent. I'd call this an emergency. All right, I found the location. Let's get going. It looks like my next upgrade is going to be to upgrade the pickaxe, but I need to complete the mission before and after science. First, before I can do that. Wait, escape goes here now? Weird. Oh, because I'm back at this base menu again. Let's... Get those pinatas though, since I can. Bracing for impact. And that's all she wrote. So we have even more founders coins. We've got survivor, a lot of more survivor experience. Dang. Also, oh, there's claim four. Well, if you have llama packed with a variety of goodies, you have four, you want to, yes. Ooh, can I have an axe too? Well, that's me. Got a new defender called Bruiser. Curious what that means. I think that's, I don't think that's a player. I think that's a, one of these survivors you can use. They give you different bonuses. Even more survivor XP. Jeez. And I might be able to open one of those founders things in a moment here. Whoa, I think it just leveled up. That's the point, isn't it? It just get hit a different rank. Hey, check 
out this nice loot. So if you hit it, it has a chance to turn into a silver when you're hitting it, which makes it a better loot box. And then I think it might be able to turn into also into a gold, which would be even better. What is that? What? The f what is happening? This game's bonkers. Do I want to upgrade a knife or a gun? I, I like sniper rifles, generally. Oh, it's a sniper defender. Look at that. Founder's coins, even more. Uh, retractable floor spikes. Ah. Bracing for impact. That was a complicated thing happening right there. Adios. Enjoy. Got Assassin Sarah. So there's a lot of characters you can play as in this game. My god. So it looks like we got a huge amount of survivor XP, which is different from hero XP, I believe. You can only spend it on... I think you can only spend it on the other characters. These... These, these, these characters you keep getting that help you out. Give you different bonuses and stuff like that. Got a bunch of Founders Coins, though. Kind of a bummer they don't combine these totals, uh, the Founders Coins and Survivor XP into a singular thing when you're on this menu. Okay, though. Let's go. Only 60? I still don't have 100. I felt like I had 100 now. Ah, well. The important thing is that things got really complicated really fast, and I have a billion things to keep track of now, including well, apparently a lot of duplicates of different characters. It looks like there's a retire button, so I guess you can get rid of the ones that you don't want. And all these dupes and whatnot. But yeah, it's, it's straight up like booster pack style progression, it looks like. Which people have very mixed responses to. So you're the good you're the one I got with that was apparently good. A rare survivor. Uh let's inspect you. Gives you trap bonus. Assign the survivor to a squad to increase uh squad power to and gain fortitude, offense, resistance, or tech. Assign him to a squad where the lead survivor is competitive to gain more power. Match set bonuses with other survivors to gain a 5% trap damage. So that can very, very much be useful if you set up the right batches. That'll be interesting to figure out as we go. Let's get back to the next mission, though, As at this point. Uh, let's go. We're gonna get a skill point for this one. That's what that's this one down here. Okay, so it's it's showing it up as a map that we're progressing down. This is the starting zone, and then we're progressing outwards towards different chunks, and we're gonna be probably taking over the world and slowly recovering from the fact that the world's uh, been taken over by this purple mist in every direction. Let's get started then. So before and after science, how do I start? I click on it here. I don't know how to start it. <laughs> Just traveling to lobby, is that really like... Like I have to wait for the... Oh! Wait, these are people. Okay, so that looks like it's the first multiplayer map, so let's go ahead and get together with my friends and we'll group up and experience this. Thanks for watching, this has been the extended tutorial. Whoa, it was way longer than I thought it was, but... Yeah, we'll be ready to do the multiplayer next, and for the rest of the series, I believe.